In today's video, we are going to create this. Let's get started. Open the edit page, then right click on the media pool and create a new fusion composition. You can adjust the duration as needed. Once that's done, drag it onto the timeline. By the way, I've added the project file link in the description, so feel free to use it. All right, now let's click on the fusion page icon to continue. Drag your first clip onto the workspace and rename it by pressing F2. Now to give it some depth, add an image plane 3D node. Connect it with a merge and render 3D node. Take the output of render 3D and connect it with media out. Once that's done, make sure to rearrange your nodes properly. By the way, you can break the node line like this by pressing Alt. And there you go, we're all set. All right, let's add a camera to the setup. Connect it with the Merge 3D node. Click on the camera node, head to Transform, and change the Z offset to around 1.6. This should help us view the clip and fit it properly within the window. This value usually works pretty well for most setups. Okay, let's add our second clip and give it a name. Add an image plane 3D to it and connect it with the Merge 3D. Now drag the Merge 3D to one of the viewers to observe the 3D space. Take a look at the screen to see the keywords for moving in 3D space. All right, click on the image plane 3D2 and move it backwards in the Z-axis. Now let's disable the image plane 3D1 for now to focus on the second clip. We need to adjust this clip until it fits properly on the viewer. Click on the image plane 3D2, go to transform and change the scale until it fits properly. Once done, enable the image plane 3D1. Now let's create the mask. Click on the Aaron node, then add a polygon mask node. Drag the Aaron node to one of the viewers and disable the polygon node for now to focus on the clip. I'll draw a mask around the eye since I want the camera to go through the eye. Don't worry about being too precise at this stage. Once done, enable the polygon node. As you can see, everything got cut off and only the eye is visible. We want the opposite effect, so just click on invert. You can also increase the soft edges, but keep it minimal. All right. Now click on the polygon node and press Ctrl plus C to copy and Ctrl plus V to paste it. Click on the new polygon and untick invert, then change the paint mode from merge to add. So what will happen is, if we change the value of the level, you can see our eye will start to disappear. We'll use it to create a fade out animation as our camera moves through the eye. For now, let's decrease it to zero. All right, let's set up our first camera movement. Click on the camera node and add a transform 3D node. Rename it as null. We'll use it to control the camera movement. Now here's a tip. I'll start my animation from frame 10, but since you'll be using music, I recommend marking all the beats first. Then add the first keyframe 10 to 15 frames before the first mark. After that, you can follow along with me. All right, let me demonstrate. On the first frame, which is frame 10 in my case, add a keyframe for XYZ offset. Now move forward around 30 frames from there and adjust the values properly. Decrease the Z value to move towards the eyes, and change X and Y accordingly. Since I want to focus on Mikasa's face through the eye, I'll adjust the values accordingly. Let me just tweak the X offset a little, and now the Y to center it. Now change the Z value until the first clip moves behind the camera. Now if we preview, we'll get something like this. If you have noticed, our Mikasa clip is way too big now, and you might want to go to the image plane 3D and change the scale. However, if you do that, you'll notice this transparent background, and trust me, you cannot fix it no matter how hard you try. So instead of doing that, click on the Mikasa node, then add a 2D transform node. First change the edges to mirror. Now if you decrease the scale from here, you'll see we can make it as small as possible. Let me undo it. Okay. So change its scale as needed, and also play with the X and Y offset to make it fit properly within the viewer. Let's fine tune our animation. Open the spline editor and tick the null. Let me adjust it a little. Okay. Click on the size to fit button and select all of them together. Then press S to make S curve. Now press T and drag the ease in value to change it. Around 50 should be good. Also change the ease out value to something like 10. All right, let's animate the polygon mask now. Go around five to 10 frames forward from where your camera animation started, or you can find a good spot of your liking. Then click on the copied polygon node and change the level to one. Add a keyframe to the level. Now go to the frame where the camera animation ended and move a little backward until you find a suitable place. Decrease the value to zero. I would recommend finishing the animation before the eye moves behind the camera. For the curves, just make a simple S-curve. If we preview, we will get something like this. So here I've added another clip and named it as Mikasa 2. Now let me show you another way to make the transition. 
first move the clip on the Z-axis until it's a little far behind the second clip. Now disable the image plane 3D2. Let me move the playhead a little. Alright, now adjust the clip until it fits properly. Change the scale, and also for this one, we have to adjust the X and Y offsets as well. So do it properly. Alright now click on the Mikasa 2 node and add a 2D transform node. Change the edges to mirror. We will need it obviously. Now drag the Mikasa node to a viewer. We will create a mask around this area. So add a polygon node and start drawing the mask. Once done, invert it. Then copy it as before. Now untick invert and change the paint mode to add. Okay let's continue. Add another 3D transform node and name it null 2. Now go around 10 to 15 frames backward from where our first camera animation ended and add keyframes to XYZ offset. From here, go around 30 to 40 frames. Totally depends on how fast you want the animation to be. Now as before, change the Z value to move the camera and also change X so the clip moves to the left. Wait, let me decrease the polygon level. I forgot to do that. Okay, so this clip will move kind of to the left as our third clips reveal itself. So just adjust X, Y accordingly and change Z until the clip gets behind the camera. Now the clip looks big, so adjust its size and position by going to the 2D transform node. Alright, let's animate the mask. Go around 5 frames forward from where the second camera animation started. Click on the copied polygon 2 node and change the level to 1. Add a keyframe and move forward until you find a suitable place like this. Then, decrease the level to 0. As for the curves, it will be the same as before. Add another 3D transform node and name it Null 3. Go to where our first animation started and add a keyframe to Z rotation. Now move 5 frames and change the value to something like minus 2 or minus 3. Then move 5 frames forward from where your last animation ended and change the value to 2. For this one, make S curve. Let me go to the edit page and show you how our transition looks like. Not bad, right? But we can make it a little bit better. So add an adjustment clip and make it the same size as our main clip. Then, go to Fusion and search for Camera Shake. I'll choose the one with CSHK, but if you want more controls, just choose the normal one. By default, it's way too high, so we gotta change the edges to mirror. Then decrease the speed to around 0.15, change the strength to 0.15 as well, and also decrease the X and Y deviation a little. And with that our tutorial has finished. If it was helpful, then give it a like and also watch my other tutorials.